Dear brothers and sisters, in this moment of reflection, I wish to delve into the topic of the writings of Maria Valtorta, the controversy that has surrounded them, and the significance they have held for many believers. It is a subject that continues to captivate and generate interest, as the figure of Maria Valtorta, a mystic of Italian origins, has left a significant mark on modern Christian spirituality. Maria Valtorta's main work, titled The Gospel as Revealed to Me, is a vast testimony of the life of Jesus Christ, enriched with details and descriptions that often deviate from the narratives found in the canonical Gospels. The inner revelations that Maria claims to have received from an inner voice have sparked profound debate regarding their authenticity and origin. Many have questioned whether these revelations can be considered a form of authentic divine revelation, comparable to the Holy Scriptures, or if they are rather works of human origin stemming from devout intentions. The Catholic Church has undertaken several steps concerning Maria Valtorta's writings. In 1949, the first two volumes of her work were placed on the Index of Forbidden Books, with an anonymous article in the Osservatore Romano criticizing the work as fictionalized and containing historical, geographical, and similar errors. However, it is important to emphasize that the Index of Forbidden Books was abolished in 1966, and that the other texts by Maria Valtorta were never included in the Index. Despite this, the Church's stance on Maria Valtorta's revelations has remained ambiguous and pending, without a definitive judgment. This lack of an official judgment has fueled a wide range of opinions within the Church and among believers. Many readers find in Maria Valtorta's texts a source of inspiration and meditation, enriching their understanding of Jesus Christ and His teachings. They believe that these revelations offer an additional perspective on the figure of Christ and His redemptive mission. Others, however, are more cautious and consider Maria Valtorta's writings as a personal testimony of her faith and spirituality, but not on par with the Holy Scriptures or the Church's tradition. In the matter of Maria Valtorta's writings, it is important to also consider the criticisms and objections raised by some scholars and members of the Church regarding her work. They have highlighted significant differences between Maria Valtorta's writings and the four canonical Gospels. The Gospels present Jesus Christ as a humble and reserved figure. His discourses are essential and incisive, always aimed at conveying a message of profound significance. In contrast, Maria Valtorta's writings, such as The Gospel as Revealed to Me, appear to depict a much more talkative and self-celebratory Jesus. He openly proclaims himself as the Messiah and the Son of God, imparting theological lessons using terms reminiscent of a contemporary teacher. This difference has been underscored as a critical point for some. Furthermore, in the writings of Maria Valtorta, the figure of the Virgin Mary is portrayed in a significantly different light compared to the Gospels. While the Gospels depict her as a woman of great humility and silence, in Valtorta's writings, Mary appears to be more talkative and active in imparting teachings on Marian theology, even incorporating the latest studies from modern specialists on this subject. This portrayal of the Madonna has been the subject of discussion and criticism by some theologians. These critical observations have led some theologians and members of the Church to take a cautious stance regarding Maria Valtorta's writings, suggesting that they may be considered as a personal and devotional testimony, but not equivalent to the Holy Scriptures or the Church's tradition. Despite the varying opinions on the matter, it is important that the debate concerning Maria Valtorta's writings be conducted with respect and a spirit of seeking the truth. Scholars, theologians, and members of the Church continue to carefully examine these writings and discuss their theological and spiritual implications. Regardless of one's personal position on this issue, it is crucial that believers do not allow themselves to be divided by controversies or theological discussions. Our faith in Christ and our communion within the Catholic Church are what unite us as a community of believers. Our primary focus must be on Christ, His Word, and love for one another. We must always remember that the center of our faith is Jesus Christ, the Incarnate Word, the Savior of the world. The Holy Scriptures and the tradition of the Church are the pillars upon which our faith rests and are the sources from which to draw for a profound and authentic understanding of God's Word. May the Lord grant us the grace to always be guided by the Holy Spirit in our search for truth and in our growth in faith. Let us pray together for the unity of the Church and for greater mutual understanding among all believers.
May our faith always remain firm, rooted in the love of Christ and His Word. Please let us know in the comments what you think, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to become part of the community of faith and prayer. May God bless you.